All right, good morning, everybody. This is Bart from MultirotorForums.com. Thanks for joining us for our group build. Uh, we're going to do a basic quad, and uh, the purpose of this is to get you guys through the building process the first time, teach you some of the basic skills, and uh, give you a helicopter that you can learn with, that you'll have the skills to uh, fix if you crash it a couple times, and we'll also put you in a better position if you decide you want to build another one. Uh, you'll have the skills, you'll have uh, an understanding of the different components and how they work together, so it should be a lot easier to go into the selection process uh, having done this first. Uh, we've talked about you know, the, the thread where we're uh, discussing this stuff. We've talked about some different frames, some different options. Um, the option that uh, I'm going to go with is the uh, DJI F450 with the DJI NASA. This is a version 1 uh, flight control system and the one that I have here has the GPS. So this is going to be a NASA version 1 with GPS. It's going to be an F450 which is four arms. It's a quadcopter and uh, you could follow along with this build uh, using the F550 which is a hexacopter. Everything's going to be the same except the number of motors. Uh, the F450 with the stock motors, you can use 8 inch or 10 inch props and 3 cell or 4 cell batteries. Uh, with the 4 cell batteries uh, and the 10 inch props, um, you could put some FPV gear on and fly it around as an FPV helicopter. You could put a GoPro on with a, you know, just Velcro it to the frame. Uh, it doesn't have a ton of lift. Uh, the hexacopter with the stock DJI motors. Um, will do a little better. You could put a small camera mount on it, you could fly it around, it has a little more uh, versatility. So I'm just doing the basic quad. I have an F450 here, I've disassembled it, I've desoldered everything. So that's what I'm going to use for the build. So you could use an F550. Uh, you could also use some other frames, um, but the main reason why uh, I proposed this group build uh, to use the F450 or the F550 is that uh, power distribution is built into the frame itself. So if you're new to this, you're saying, what's all this power distribution stuff we hear about? Power distribution is how you get power from the two wires coming out of the battery, the two main power wires. How do you get those to all the motors? How do you get the power from the battery to all the motors? Um, there's different ways of doing it. You could make a wiring harness. That's my preferred way. I make a custom harness for each helicopter I build. Uh, you could also use what's called a power distribution board. And this is just one example from uh, Photoship 1, I think this is. Yeah, Photoship 1. And what happens is you attach the batteries on one side on these two pads, positive and negative. And then on the other side, this is like a printed circuit board. On the other side, you attach each power tap for your motor controllers, or ESCs as they're called. And so you put this in the center of the helicopter frame, you run your wires onto each of these little pads, and this distributes power throughout the helicopter to your different motors. So the nice thing about the F450 and the F550 is that this uh, lower frame plate has that same kind of power distribution built into it. So it makes it very easy. Um, you don't really have to sit and say, well, how long am I going to cut my wires? How am I going to run my wires? the thinking for power distribution has already been done so um, it just makes it easy for us doing a group build to use this and if you're building your first if you've never done this sort of thing it makes it really easy so what happens is you attach the batteries on these two pads and they're marked positive and minus very clearly and then each of these little pads around the perimeter of the frame would be where you take power and you run it out to the motors so there's copper on the top and the bottom of this that act as your positive and negative uh, distribution and it's already done for you so we're going to use this for the build I'm going to use this for the build if you want to deviate from this you're you know feel free um, the only thing I ask is that if you deviate very much from what we're doing uh, that you start a new thread to discuss it we don't want to bog down the build thread with uh, build details that are very different from what we're doing okay and this is supposed to be simple. It's supposed to be something uh, that people can refer to. So when they decide they want to build a first quad, it's not as daunting. There's already a lot of questions uh, answered. And um, it's going to be 
uh, a, a process that we all go through and by using this one thread we can all uh, keep the discussion focused on what we're doing and it'll be good. So the only change I'm going to make uh, with my quad is that I am going to use instead of the stock DJI motors I'm going to use these Tiger uh, MT2216-12 so it's MT2216-12 and that's an 800 kV motor uh, the DJI motor is 920 kV. Uh, kV is the number of RPMs you get out of every volt you put into the motor. So whatever that number is, this one is 800. Uh, a four cell battery pack is 14.8 volts. So theoretically the maximum RPM this motor will turn is 800 times 14.8. Um, you can see one is a little taller than the other and that's just a little more of a a stator. The stator is the inside of the motor. There's more of that inside so it's going to make a little bit more power. I know I'm going to run 10 inch props on my helicopter and I want to try to have enough lift to carry two battery packs. So I have a little bit of redundancy built in with the power and I have a little more um, uh, runtime duration. So uh, my helicopter ultimately will be these motors, 10 inch props, hopefully two four cell battery packs, and uh, a GoPro with a video transmitter so I could fly it around FPV nothing long distance just around the field or park or whatever okay so if you've followed us this far six minutes into the video I'm just gonna talk another minute or so uh, the NASA flight controller has an input side and an output side on the input side you run wires from your radio's receiver so the receiver has outputs for each channel, throttle, yaw, pitch, roll. And so when you're moving the sticks, each of these channels is sending information normally out to servos on an airplane that moves the flight control surfaces. But with a multirotor helicopter, there's another step in the control process here. So the wires go from the receiver into the flight control system. And this interprets those commands from the receiver and sends those commands out to the individual motors. So a multi-rotor helicopter will roll and pitch by speeding up and slowing down all the different motors. So your flight control system is basically only interpreting your control inputs and converting those into motor commands. Now it's got some funky stuff going on in there. It's referring to gyro inputs and accelerometer inputs. It wants to know is the helicopter doing this when it's not telling it to so that it can respond to that and keep things stable. But the point of all this is that you're going to need a radio system with outputs from the receiver, at least for a NASA. There are flight control systems that use, uh, like this one has, this Futaba has an SBUS output. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not really super familiar with Futaba. I use mostly JR and uh, high tech. But like the Futaba one has a single wire, I think that'll send all the information out. And some flight control systems have a single input that you can use. So it doesn't change the fact that the receiver is talking to the flight control system. Uh, what it does change is that you don't have as many wires, which makes things uh, nicer with the install, makes it simpler, and um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, la, 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 la. I forget. But anyway, so for the NASA, your receiver will have outputs. The NASA takes those, turns them into motor commands, and controls the helicopter. Now as far as a radio goes, you might have one of these sitting around. It's an old uh, 72 megahertz system with a long antenna wire. You could use that. If you want to do this and, and really not spend a lot of money, just test the waters, um, feel free to use it. The only thing is plan on some scheme to uh, keep this from getting wrapped up in the propellers. I've used these before with helicopters. What I do is I take, uh, some of you guys might remember NIRODs, the control rods for RC planes. I take the outer, like the red or the blue, and I just stick it straight up in the air and I run the wire through that and that keeps it out of the props. Um, totally acceptable. This thing speaks the same language uh, to the servos that newer radios like this JR receiver would. So if you have an old 72 megahertz, don't be afraid to use it. Um, <clears throat> Some of you guys are going to say, no, it has to be 2.4, but no, it could be 72 megahertz. If you want to go uh, expensive right off the bat, you know you're going to be doing more of these, 
Uh, spend some money up front, get yourself at least, I would say at least nine channels. This is a JR9503. The receiver again has multiple outputs and um, this will work with any flight control system. The nice thing about JR, if you plan to go to Microcopter, JR, uh, this little satellite, which is actually doing the receiving part of the, the process, you could wire this directly into the Microcopter flight control system and get rid of all the wires and stuff that go along with this. But SBUS does that also, so some systems use that. Next in line, this would be a Futaba THA, it's brand new. Uh, this is the receiver that goes with it. It's eight channels, which is good for most of your helicopters. Um, slightly less expensive, works great. Last but not least, if you want to go 2.4 gigahertz, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, you could pick up a used uh, Spectrum DX6. They work great. They're for sale all over the internet for 100 bucks used. You can get orange receivers, which are not Spectrum brand receivers, but they are uh, compatible with the radio. And you can get these from Hobby King for about $25. So for about 125 bucks, you can get a six channel, 2.4 gigahertz radio. And um, it'll work great with your NASA, you know, your basic quad, whatever it is you're gonna build. Six channels is about the minimum though. All right, the next video, we're gonna talk about uh, the tools that you need. And we are going to, uh, after that video, get started talking about uh, the NASA's uh, user manual. We're going to follow that straight through for the build. And anytime you're doing one of these things, if there's a user manual, follow it. And if you don't want to follow it, follow it anyway, because that's how you uh, ensure success with these things, following the manuals, following the directions to the slightest detail. And um, until you're an expert on this stuff, which I don't know if anybody really considers themselves an expert, uh, until you're an expert, <laughs> excuse me, follow the manual. All right, next video, tools.